start this teaching video, let's just talk about the elephant in the room, okay? What is this stupid white container back here? I did a singing video, it was sitting there. I did a teaching video, it's sitting there. It's John's. And the chalk is sitting over there. I mean, obviously I'm not a professional vlogger or I would have checked my surroundings. So that's the elephant in the room. But what we're gonna talk about is so much more important than the elephant in the room. So let's just get that out and open. Suzanne, you should have moved that out of the way, but I didn't, so disregard it. I wish I'd done this. Well, that would've been great, but I didn't. So disregard that big chunky white thing that I'm fixing to move and listen to this fantastic lesson that the Lord gave me today for you. Bye. Good morning. This is Suzanne Light. If this is the first time you're happening upon this channel, welcome. I'm a um, child of God that lives in Alabama, that loves the Lord, loves to vlog with my family, loves to journal, love to prayer journal, love to memory journal, love to study the Word of God, love to teach the Word of God, retired after many, many, many years of working full time. And I often tell people that YouTube is my retirement gig. And it is in a sense, but it's also my God gig, if that makes sense. I'm not trained in the Bible. I don't have a degree. I do have a master's degree in educational leadership. And, but I am privileged to teach the Word of God. I may make a mistake here and there. Uh, I may say something wrong. And if I do, you can correct me if you know for a fact that I said it wrong. <laughs> if not, just write me a private message and let me know <laughs> so I won't do it again. I love the Lord. I just recorded a song. I don't know if it'll be on before or after this. I'll have the same shirt on about speaking of how marvelous that God's love is and that I stand amazed in the love that he has for me. I want to talk to you just a little bit, and that's always a joke when I say a little bit, but I want to talk to you a little bit about keeping your heart in it. I'm speaking to you Christians. I'm speaking to you that have received the Lord. Now, if you have not received the Lord and you're listening to this, it will be the best decision of your life. It is not an easy, rosy path to you know, blooms and honeysuckles and roses and good times. It is a path that is often very hard to walk, but very promising. And the thing is, is we have a father, whether you have an earthly father or if he's gone on, or if you never knew him, you have a father, and a father that created you in his image. But today I'm talking to those of us who are walking the walk already about how crucial it is to keep our heart in it. What happens when you go, y'all seen my chaotic basement, some of you have, and what happens when you go and buy tons and tons and tons of arts and crafts supplies and you're real gung-ho and you're so excited about working on these crafts and you do it for a while and then you lose heart? What happens? They get pushed aside. They get stuck in a drawer. They become clutter in your basement. They get dust on them. Some of them, of your supplies will get out of date and they will be ineffective if you try to use them again, such as glues and paints and stuff like that. But when we walk with the Lord, we don't have the opportunity or the privilege or the time to become disengaged. It is so crucial that we stay engaged because when we become disengaged, we become failures. We're non-effective. And I wanna tell you what COVID has done to many Christians and to many churches. And if you don't think this is a ploy by the enemy, well, step up and listen to this real good. What COVID has done has made us become disengaged from everything. 
thing. I am a smiler. I smile probably, I'm a constant smiler. That's just, that's who I am. I love to smile at people I've never seen. I smile at people that I will never see again. It's just my expression. I see people that so need to smile. And <laughs> but what COVID has done with the mask, it's covered up my smile. And when I cover up this much of my face, it's covering up my breath. It's covering up my smile. It's covering up so much about me. It's disengaging me from the person that I meet, whether I know them or don't know them. So as a Christian, there's a time for an engagement. There's also a time for rest, but there is never a time for disengagement. You hear me? There is never a time for disengagement. We've got to get past where COVID has brought so many people to. I guess I'm more radical, more whatever, but I have continued to keep going. And I know that some of you even have probably not left your house in months. So you've become disengaged from society. And even if that's what you felt like you needed to do for the prevention of COVID, you don't have to be disengaged from your God. That's the beautiful thing about that, is that you never have to become disengaged. So when we walk through a storm, basically all we can think about when we walk through that storm is getting through that storm and getting to the other side and getting out of it, correct? We want relief from the storm that we're in, whether it be mental, emotional, physical, spiritual, whatever kind of storm it is, financial, we want relief from that. But we've also got to remember that while we're in the storms, those very storms teach us how to stay strong, how to believe, how to have faith, how to keep heart. To know that when you're walking through the darkest parts of your life, he still does not forsake you. It may feel like it. There may not be anything in you that feels like God is with you when you're going through certain things, but he never leaves you. He only used this experience for you to be stronger. It's actually the battles that we go through that teaches us how to fight. That's where we learn to fight. If everything was roses all the time, we wouldn't have any fight within us. So our best lessons are taught to us through hardships. And oh man, there's just some of them I wished I had not known. I just wish that I had not gone through, but I did. And I'm on the other side of it. And I guarantee you that I learned a lesson through every one of them. And it also teaches us to depend upon the Lord. You know, we live in 2021 where we're very self-reliant. Many of us have been blessed beyond measure to where financially, you know, we're in a good place. And, and we may be in a good place in our family. We may be in a good place with our jobs. But when you go through those hardships in any of those situations or many more, you have to depend on God to make it. You must. You should. Prayer is our answer, not that prayer is our only answer. That's like saying, well, if we had a better answer, we would go to it first, but prayer is our only answer. No, prayer is our answer when we go through those hardships, when we suffer. But because God is good, God will bring you through when you depend upon him. I am working with some young ladies right now that are going through some very, very hard times that they don't want to be going through. But the only assurance that I have for them that God has not forsaken you, God has a plan for your life. He's the God of second chances and third chances and fourth chances. And he is good all the time. And all the time, he is good. And, you know, I said something in a lesson the other day that <clears throat> God doesn't do things for us because we're good. He does things for us because he's good. And he allows us to go through things. He allows us to go through trials. He allows us to go through situations. But he also knows that he's got a way. He's the way maker. He's the promise keeper. 
He's the light at the end of the darkness. He's the beginning and he's the end. He put, he gives us, uh, he gives us uh, dancing for our mourning. He's always with us. He never forsakes us. He never leaves us. Sometimes when you've been through a really tough battle and you fought really hard, you come out of that battle tired. And when you're tired spiritually, physically, emotionally, mentally, you need to take a time of rest. I had some outpatient surgery done last week and I've had to force myself to slow down, even though I'm getting ready to take mother to the doctor today. But still, I took a week. I took a whole week. They told me to and I took one. <laughs> a slowing down and giving my body rest. And I have rested in between, but there are certain things that I have to do. But you find yourself vulnerable after you've been through a battle. It's very important when you have poured yourself into a battle or pouring yourself in a battle that you also give your time, yourself time to rest and to replenish, not to disengage. So there's engagement and then there's rest, but there is never disengagement. There are times when we've gone through things, you just want to say, I'm through. <laughs> I'm through. I've done that before. I'm through. I'm through. I'm tired. I'm through. But no. You just rest, rest in him, rest in his word, rest in prayer, but don't disengage. And if we're not careful, that can be the very time that we tend to loosen our grip on what we believe or the fight or the battle that we've been through, and we tend to pull back and disengage. That's what I see has happened in the church. I see that people have been at home, they've been watching online, and then even when they get back to church, they feel disengaged. God doesn't want us to be disengaged. Whether you're at home watching it online or you're in the service, he wants you to be engaged, worshiping, praising him. There is strength for you. We're commanded to do that for him. We're commanded to keep heart and say, well, Susan, you don't understand. It's so hard. Oh, yes, I do. I could sit here and tell you my life story and you'd almost be depressed. I've been in extreme times. I have disengaged and sometimes it's been very hard for me to come back. And that's the reason when I read this devotional, I thought, oh Lord, don't let us disengage, especially right now when the battle is so strong, when the nation is at unrest, when our churches are struggling. I mean, we're, we're pulling back together, but we've struggled this past year because of COVID. Your own life may have been so greatly affected by COVID. You may have lost precious loved ones. You, you yourself may have had it and you're trying to regain your strength. Your strength comes from the Lord. Remember this, that in the good times and the bad, in the good times and the bad, our strength comes from the Lord on a daily basis. We're actually nothing without him because we are just these mortal bodies. It is our spiritual person inside that gives us the strength, that gives us, you know, the resolve to get up every day and to go and to do and to make every day count. But sometimes when we go through the battle and we're coming out or we may be in the midst of it and tired of fighting, we let our guard down and we can't afford to do that in 2021. You hear me? You cannot afford to let your guard down. There must be Bible reading. There must be prayer time. There must be time of fellowship and worship and magnifying him for your spirit person to be alive and well in 2021. We got a lot of things coming against us, but whatever's coming against us, the breath of God is breathing on us, giving us strength. When we worship him, he strengthens us. When we study his word, he strengthens us. I've been reading a lot about in the Old Testament. I'm actually thinking seriously about doing a detailed uh, scripture journaling in First and Second Samuel because the history is so rich there, and that's where some of my devotion had been. But David had been in in Second Samuel. David in Second Samuel chapter eleven. It says here that after restoring the nation to peace, and and he had worked so hard to restore them to great military power. David had been working, 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 working. 
David's personal life, after doing all of that and doing so much good, he disengaged. He was tired. He was weary. And his personal life became estranged in sin. So he was weary from battle. It wasn't the weariness that got him. It was his disengagement from the weariness that got him. Because he disengaged and he sent his um, troops out to fight. Second uh, Samuel 11, 1 says, In the spring of the year when kings normally go to war, when kings normally go to war, David sent Joab and the Israelite army to fight the Ammonites. They destroyed the Ammonite army and laid siege to the city of Rabbi. However, David stayed behind in Jerusalem. And late one afternoon, after a midday rest, David got out of bed and was walking on the roof of his palace. And as he looked out, he saw a woman of unusual beauty taking a bath. David disengaged from his normal responsibilities. He had lost heart. He was weary. He was tired. So he went out of the norm. He disengaged from his normal duties, his normal activities. And instead of just resting, he became disengaged. And because of that, it made him very vulnerable. Do you realize that you can be so vulnerable at times that your guard is down? And when your guard is down and you don't have on the whole armor of God, you know, the whole armor of God is not really an optional outfit to wear. The whole armor of God we're supposed to wear every day. But when you start taking it off piece by piece, the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of peace, and the belt of truth, when one of those things starts slipping, the whole outfit becomes ineffective. And when it becomes ineffective, we become ineffective. I'm telling you all of this today from personal knowledge. I'm telling you because I've been there, done that, got t-shirts. I'm not telling you this as in a preachy mode. When I share with you, nine times out of ten, I have experienced it. And I have experienced this very thing. When I went through my divorce, because of the prayers that I was praying and the battles that, and I, my battle had been so long and I was so tired. And I remember saying, God, I'm vulnerable. I am so vulnerable. I was starving for attention. I was starving for real love. But God... He really spoke to me and made me keep my guard up. Did I do everything perfect? Absolutely not. But there was always in the back of my mind, don't let God down and don't let your baby girl down. Don't let God down and don't let your baby girl down. And because of that, and I just shared with a friend this week that's gone through great loss, and I said, be careful of vulnerability. Because if the enemy can sneak in, you've been through one of the greatest hardships of your life. If he can sneak in and try to make you think. See, David, the, the Bible doesn't st say that David took a rest and was spending time with God. It said he just totally disengaged from his army. And when he disengaged, the enemy put lust, lust of the flesh, right there in front of him. And he sinned, and he sinned, and he sinned. And this was a man, the Bible says, after God's own heart. This is a great man, a great king. The enemy wants you to be in, disengaged. He wants you to lose heart. I know that some of you, I personally know, that some of you are fighting such battles that you've disengaged. I know that covid has created such fear in your life that you are disengaged. I know that personal, physical battles that you're going through, you're thinking, I can't do this anymore. You're disengaged. Well, does it make you a horrible person? It's almost like a reflex that you do sometimes. You want to back down and say, well, 
but he's not giving us anything that he won't bring us through. He's not giving you anything that he won't bring you through. I'm telling you, been there, done that, know that. And I'm encouraging you today not to become disengaged. May you wisely discern the difference between restorative rest and undisciplined disengagement. You know what this devotional says? Knowing the difference between these th two things may save your reputation. Wow. Wow. Know the difference between restorative rest and undisciplined disengagement. Right now we need to pray because I feel God's presence so strong. Father, I pray for whoever's listening to this today, they know who they are. They know that this is hitting home with them. That due to COVID or difficulties in their life, death, grief, financial, personal, whatever it is, they've disengaged from you and said, I'm just backing up. I'm, I'm just, I'm backing up for a while. I'm just going to take a rest. I'm just, I'm going to bow out. Well, this is not the time to bow out, nor is there any time to bow out. This is the time they need to be in their prayer closet. This is the time they need to be in their favorite chair, reading your word, studying your word, writing their prayers out, journaling scriptures, saying, though hell is coming against me with every force, it will not conquer me. For I am an overcomer through the blood of Jesus Christ. His blood covers me. My circumstances may look horrible, but Lord, just as we read the other day, when you show up on the scenes of our lives, our circumstances are irrelevant to what you want and what you will do and what you will provide. And I pray right now, Father, provision for precious people that are listening to the sound of my voice today, I pray for provision for them, Lord. I pray that if they need restorative rest, that you give it to them. But Father, I pray against disengagement in their lives. And I pray that right now, Father, that you, Holy Spirit, that you will rise up at them right now, that you'll put the fight back there that needs to be fought, Father, that you'll put the fight back in their life, God, so that they will know, God, they need you more than ever before and that there is victory ahead and that their present circumstances does not dictate their future. Only you, Father God, dictate their future. Father, we will not lose heart, but we will persevere because it's going to be worth it. Oh, it's going to be worth it one of these days. It's going to be worth it. It's going to be beautiful. Keep a fight in us. Keep engagement. Keep us, Lord, doing what you want us to do so that we will have victory, our families will have victories, our churches will have victories, and that we will be a light to this dying and lost world. Use every one of us under the sound of my voice that we listen to, Lord. Let each person be used in their own special and unique way. Let them be light, Father. Let them be light, Father. Let them shine a light in this dark, dark world. We love you. We praise you. We magnify you. We thank you for dying for us and covering us with your blood, forgiveness of our sins. And Lord, I believe there is restorative rest coming to those that are weary. I believe there is passion returning for those who have lost their passion. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. You do not have time to lose heart. I know that was a long prayer, but sorry. <laughs> just, I'm feeling it to pray it over y'all. God is our strength. He is our present help in the time of trouble. <sighs> I know some of you are disengaged. I, mm, mm. I know some of you were disengaged. 
but I also know that you prayed that prayer with me just then and that today, April the 15th, former tax day, <laughs> that you are becoming engaged back with God and you're going to pick up your word. You're going to pick up your study Bibles or your, your devotionals. You're going to pick up your prayer journals. You're going to pick up your iPad. Whatever it is that you're drawing from strength from God, you do it in the mighty name of Jesus. Because this all makes sense with the verse that I use at the end, John 10, 10 says that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Heard this morning about a family in gospel music, life being destroyed. Three, two, one. Because the verse that I end with makes sense with all this, John 10, 10. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but God said, I've come. That you can have life and you can have it more abundantly. And I pray abundant life over every one of you that listens to this video today, this week, this month. In the mighty name of Jesus, I love y'all. Bye.